Hey guys, in this video we're going to be putting this lure to the test to see exactly how deep your twist wire needs to be. Let's check it out. While researching for this video, I discovered that some pull-out tests have already been done. You can check out Engineered Angler's channel. He's got a couple of great videos on the subject. He does some tests on screw eyes versus twist wire and epoxy versus super glue. But the question we're answering today is what is the minimum embedment you need for a freshwater lure? There's some situations where you don't have a lot of wood to work with, like on one of these bass poppers. Maybe you only have about a half inch to work with and you're wondering if that's enough. So we're going to kind of start where Engineered Angler left off. The strongest configuration he tested was a one and a quarter inch twist wire with five minute epoxy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the one and a quarter inch twist wire and I'm going to work my way down in one quarter inch increments all the way down to one quarter of an inch to see how much each of those holds. However, there's going to be some differences between our tests that you should know about. I mostly use poplar for my lures and I believe he was using cypress. Um, I also think that he was using five minute epoxy uh, and I tend to favor the 30 minute epoxy. So depending on the kind of wood that you have and the kind of glue that you use could affect the results. It's just something you need to keep in mind. We need to get started first, I guess, by making some twist wires. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to be using this scale. It's the same scale I used in the uh, saltwater popper torture test, and I'll, I'll put a link up here for you. Um, but anyway, this, uh, this scale has a pretty good size hook on it, and Something I remember from that test is uh, I was having a hard time getting this, this hook connected to my lure because this is such a big uh, link here. So I think what I'll do is I'll just oversize the loop on my twist wires for this so that uh, I can just hook it directly to the scale and not have all this, uh, you know, rigmarole trying to make a good connection. Because at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're testing the the threads uh, and the loop doesn't really have anything to do with that. So um, I'm going to put this in my vise and we'll use this as the, the gauge for the twist wire. What we need to do now though is cut some uh, wire. I'm going to be using the same uh, wire that I use on my smaller lures. This is the 0.041 stainless steel lock wire, which I have linked in the description below. Uh, but that way uh, my test is going to match what I actually use on my lures. I'm going to go with six inches or about six inches. to make my, my twist. Now that I've got quite a few of these made, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the shaft links to what I need. I'm going to do one quarter inch increments from a quarter inch all the way up to an inch and a quarter for this test. I'm going to do three of each kind. Um, so I'm going to start here with quarter of an inch. Yes, I do have my goggles on because it's shooting these all the way across the room, so. Mm. OK, 
Okay, there's my quarter inchers. The bit I'm going to use is this uh, 5 64th inch um, bit. It's what I normally use for this twist wire because you can just barely see uh, the bit beyond. So it leaves enough room in there for the uh, epoxy to get around the threads and everything. This is a poplar, by the way. Um, it's my kind of preferred wood, generally speaking. Probably would have been smarter to do this earlier, but I didn't, so. Another test we're going to perform here is more of a real configuration type test on this. And so I've made a um, lipless crankbait body out of uh, poplar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install these um, nose and tail attachment points. And I'm going to leave the the belly un, unattached for now and what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back once we've determined the shortest embedment length i'm going to embed another one at that same depth because what i want to explore is how the angle um, of the attachment affects the strength because on our on our board test we're pulling these straight out right and so that is kind of like the worst case scenario for pullout. Uh, whereas with a real lure, you've got your nose here, and then you've got your belly hook here. I'm going to put it on this side. But that belly hook is at a 90 degree angle to your line. And so if you've got a fish on here, and you're pulling it in with this attachment point, you've got all this wood in here that's helping hold that, um, that attachment into place. And so my theory is that that's going to increase the amount of strength that the lure actually has. Uh, but I wanna, I wanna do that test as well so that we can see uh, more of a real world scenario test on that uh, embedment. I don't know that I actually need the tail, but I'm gonna put it in anyway. Um, I'm going to do an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, yeah, I'll do an inch and a quarter, and then like I said, I'm not going to cut this one yet until we know the results of the straight pull. Now I know technically speaking, on a, on a lipless crankbait, the attachment point would be up here, but for the purpose of this test. I'm going to put it in the nose. Just because that's more of a common arrangement really for a lure.
I'm going to I'm going to mix this in three different batches and then I'm going to do one of each length. That way if I've got a bad mix or something, it won't just be affecting one length. Okay, so we're just about ready to start uh, doing our actual tests and I wanted to give you kind of a rundown of my setup here. You can see I've got my test board with all of my twist wires epoxied into it. Uh, it's been over 24 hours so they should be well set. Um, and then I've got my scale attached to a chain which is attached to this engine hoist. And that'll allow me to slowly raise that uh, hook and pull these uh, twist wires out and hopefully get some good measurements on the pullout strength of each one. Here are the results of our tests. You can see we get some surprisingly high capacities out of this configuration. I do think there are some outliers in our data because I would expect to see a nice even curve on the averages. So if we throw out some outliers in our data, we can tease out some more consistent averages. You can of course analyze this data however you wish, but the important thing for us today is that our worst break was a quarter inch embedment with 98.9 .9 pounds. That's very surprising to me. All right, we're about to test this lure, but I wanna give you a quick rundown of what we got here. Um, I've got a one and a quarter inch twist wire on the nose. It's embedded kind of at an angle towards the head. And then I've got a one half inch twist wire epoxied straight in, okay? So we're gonna see how this, this angle affects the strength of the lure uh, because this is a little bit more realistic setup that you would encounter um, when fishing. Now, I went on ahead and did a half inch embedment instead of a quarter inch because even though the quarter inch was pretty strong, I just, I don't really feel like there's a good enough margin of error personally for me. You may feel differently uh, and it may depend on the situation. Also, I think that a half inch embedment is a much more common scenario that we would encounter. But um, anyway, I think we can still compare what the half inch pulled at this angle is gonna look like compared to the half inch that was just pulled straight out. All right, so I've got a few bits here from our test to do a little bit of analysis here. One of the things I noticed is that on all of these pieces that pulled out, you can see there's not a whole lot of glue left um, in the threads there. And I think that's because the wire kind of stretches when it's being pulled out and it breaks all of those little bonds with the glue. And I think that's why you have all of that glue loss in there. And then eventually, of course, it just pulls out. But that seems to be pretty consistent throughout all of these pieces here. And you can kind of see on, um, 
on the board here, there's a lot of surface splitting. And here's a, here's a quarter inch piece that came out and brought a little bit of wood with it. But you can see there's almost, there's almost no epoxy left on there, which is kind of interesting. It still though, it held in pretty well. And then this guy, so the nose piece, the first one that pulled out was this one and you can kind of see how it bent and just peeled it out of there. And that was more of a wood failure, I think, because it was put in at such an angle, it was close to the surface and so it pulled out. And then here on the belly, of course that wasn't a real fair test because we kind of pulled it twice since it didn't work on the first one. I, I rocked it back the other way, so it probably didn't read as high as uh, it could have. And then the tail is just hanging on by a thread. But I thought that was pretty interesting that the, uh, the longer one pulled out first. But I think that mostly has to do with the angle of the pull and the, the angle that the wire was embedded. I think the braking strength on this lure could have been a lot higher. But because of the configuration of the wire embedment and its shallowness to the surface of the wood, it failed a little bit lower than we would expect. This just illustrates the importance of having a margin of error. Now keep in mind that the drag on your reel and the bend of your rod and the stretchiness of your line all play a part in helping reduce that stress. So even though this lure failed, it probably would not have ever failed on a bass or a freshwater fish. I think we got some good information out of these tests, but you should keep in mind that different woods are gonna have different densities, different grain patterns, and all that's gonna play a part in how well it can hold a twist wire. For example, on balsa wood baits, I always try to do a through wire because the wood's so soft. Also, different epoxies and different glues are going to have different holding strengths. And as we saw with this test, different angles make a big difference on how well the twist wire holds in. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.